Hi, my name is Alex Peck. I'm a fourth year student here at the University of Washington, majoring in the program of the environment. Um, and I did my capstone project on eight successful components, water supply system in developing communities. So for the context and background, 780 million people lack access to clean and safe drinking water. That accounts for about 88% of all diarrheal diseases in all ages. Um, some rural developing communities are highly impoverished and in need of financial assistance from third party organizations. Those third party organizations can come in the forms of private organizations like the Gates Foundation or our governmental agencies like the EPA, and they help implement water systems. Um, but sometimes the systems still fail, um, especially if they're a less uh, established organization than the ones I just mentioned. Um, so that leaves an importance on understanding which components are vital for the success of the water supply system um, to overall increase um, access to clean, safe drinking water across the globe. So that leads me to my research question. Uh, research questions of what are the components involved with the success of a small scale rural water supply system in developing communities. And also I wanted to find out what are the associated uh, relationships to finances between those components. So for my internship, I worked with an organization called Connect3. Connect3 is a nonprofit organization that is a consulting organization um, in the industry of environmental health. Um, so as a, my title is a financial analysis, so as in my, for my position, um, I did online research identifying why rural water supply systems fail and also their associated finances with the components that are involved within the system. Um, so I researched scientific publications of case studies, surveys, articles, and papers from Science Direct Journal specifically, while also doing other journals that are, that are located from the UW, UW Libraries database. Um, my results slash findings were three main categories of components of infrastructure maintenance and funding. For infrastructure, um, there is four components of source, which is basically where the water comes from, whether it's a ground groundwater or a river. There's transportation, which is how the water is transported from the source to the people, whether that's through a piping or a bucket. There's preservation, which is how the water is maintained, like whether it's through chemicals, uh, waste management, sanitation. So that's any risk of contaminating the process of going from the source to the mouth. So any, anywhere in between there. Um, so maintenance. Is another uh, category. So the two components are education reevaluation. So uh, maintenance is just the actions to re require to keep the state of the system operation constant. Um, so developing communities like education, wealth, and overall communal structure. So they need proper knowledge, skilled personnel, or basic understanding to maintain the state of the system. Um, that's achieved through third-party help or reevaluations um, from qualified personnel. The last category is funding, which uh, comes in two components of initial and continued initials for the, all the capital infrastructure. Um, so that's buying all the required um, parts uh, for actually uh, for creating a non-existent water supply system or all the parts required to repair an already existent water supply system. And continued funding is just to fund the maintenance basically to keep it overall um, healthy system that increase the lifespan. So for the finances and costs in the top right, I create a chart, which kind of talks about different types of water supply systems, the capital infrastructure costs, the recurring maintenance costs, and then the lifetime of years. So you see there is kind of a similar um, cost associated with the four bottom cheaper systems, um, but that comes with a trade-off, as in you can see the lifetime um, is a lot less than the more expensive house connection. Um, so with that decreased lifespan can come with consequences of having a failed system where you have to start the whole process over again. Um, whereas the house connection is the most convenient, safe, durable, and has longest lifespan. So that comes with an increased investment in capital and maintenance costs, but will overall save the system increasing access to people, or increasing access to clean drinking water to people, and not having a failed water system. So the implications of all this research can be helped to create evaluation criterion for water supply project consultants like uh, Connect3, for example. Um, it overall increases the rate of water supply, um, uh, the success rates of water supply projects and increasing the number of individuals who have access to clean, safe drinking water. So I'd like to give a thanks to my host organization, Connect3, um, my site supervisor, Danielle, and her associate, Nick, and then my faculty advisor, Sergey, and the UW PLE department and peer. Thank you.